All right then, so we've seen how we can use extra variants with the just-in-time mode, but we can also use another feature, which is the ability to use arbitrary values in Tailwind classes. But what does that mean exactly? Well, to demo this, I've got an extra couple of div tags down here, each one with a button in it and a paragraph tag. So what if you want to give this button here a one-off specific background color, which isn't covered by the available Tailwind classes? Well, yeah, we could extend the Tailwind color theme in the config file, but if this is just a one-off, then that might be a bit over the top. So instead, we could use an arbitrary value in a class. So what I'm going to do is add a class to this button. and uh, It's going to be a background class, so I'll say BG hyphen, and then instead of using one of the built-in colors, I'm going to use square brackets, and inside the square brackets, we can pass in our arbitrary value, which is going to be just a hex code, and in this case, I'm going to use F46225. And now Tailwind is going to generate a background class for this color using this one value, and it's going to work in the browser. So that's pretty cool, right? And we can do the same for text color. So I could add in another class this time. I could say text hyphen, then square brackets. We always put our arbitrary values inside the square brackets. And inside, I'm going to say hash FF F6CA. So Tailwind, again, is going to generate a text color class for this one-off value as well. Now, I'm also going to add the P-2 and rounded class in here as well to make it look a little bit nicer. And before we preview this, I want to show you one more example, this time for the font size. So on the paragraph tag, I'm going to add in a class and that class is going to be text hyphen square brackets. And this time inside here, 24 pixels. So Tailwind this time is going to generate a class on the fly for us right here, but this time it's for font size and not the font color. So it can detect that we're using a kind of length property here, a font size rather than a color. All right. So let's save this now and preview it. So we can see in the browser now that this all worked and we have that unique background and text colors for the button. And we also have the custom text size for the paragraph tag as well. Awesome. Now we can also use CSS variables as the arbitrary values too. So if I was to switch over to the global style sheet that we created, I can add the variables in here and then we can use them in our template as those arbitrary values. So let's add in the root selector to put our variables inside and let's create one called primary. So double dash primary for some kind of primary color. And this is going to be equal to hash one E C C A C. All right, cool. So let's also make another variable called lead font, which is going to be for a font size. And the value of that is going to be 1.2 rem. All right, so we have our variables and back in our HTML file, we can use those variables as arbitrary values in classes. So let's do that. Let's go down to the second div with the button inside it. And let's add a class attribute. And inside that, we'll say bg hyphen square brackets and then we're going to use a variable. So we say var, then parentheses. And then inside that, whatever variable we want to use, in our case, it's going to be the primary one. So double dash primary. All right, that's the name of the variable. So we're basically saying here that we want to use the primary variable color as the background color for this class. But this is not enough. We also have to specify the type of variable value that this is. In our case, it's going to be a color. So before the variable, we say color and then a colon, and then the variable straight away with no spaces. And that's all there is to it. Now, I'm also going to add a class of text hyphen white to this as well, and also the P hyphen two class, and also the rounded class to the button to make it look a bit better. And then let's save this. And now in the browser, we can see the variable color right here. So let's do another one this time using the lead font variable that we made. So add a class to the paragraph tag down here, and this time it's gonna be text hyphen, and then square brackets, and then we say var parentheses, and the name of the variable inside that, which is lead font. But the same again, we have to specify the type of variable value. It's no longer a color though, this time we say length and a colon, then the variable. Now we use length for anything that basically uses rems, ems, pixels, etc. as a value. So 
Let's save this and then give it a whirl in the browser. And we can see now that the font size takes effect right here. So then my friends, that's how we can use arbitrary values with Tailwind classes. These are really good for any one-off values where you just want to break out a little bit from the ready-made classes and values that Tailwind provides us with. Next up, I'm going to show you how to set up a Next.js application using Tailwind with the just-in-time mode enabled.